there are numerous factors that uh, have contributed to Africa's uh, economic, deve economic development uh, issues. Um, I have decided specifically to focus on one of those, which is basically policy. Um, however, um, in the book, I do talk about things like the historical context, um, issues of geography, um, the historical context in the con sense of uh, colonialism, for example, um, and how that all may have, to some extent, contributed to the economic malaise that we see now across the continent. However, um, the main issue that um, I am tackling in my work is that of aid, which is an active policy um, where we as the international and global community have designed a specific policy towards um, towards uh, supporting economic development in Africa. So rather than things like geography and history, which um, are ostensibly outside the realm of our abilities, we're really focused on very specific um, issue of aid to Africa and how that has been a, uh, um, a, a negative factor in ensuring long-term economic growth. I suppose in the context of my work, I think that there is this uh, unstated um, view or unstated fact that aid to Africa has not worked. Um, by that, I should clarify that there are essentially three types of aid. There's humanitarian or emergency aid, which goes to actually um, assist during times of, let's say, a tsunami or um, if there's a, uh, an emergency like an earthquake or a flood. Um, then there's also NGO or charitable aid, which is very small amounts of money that people send to African countries to support pretty much uh, clear and defined projects, such as providing a scholarship for a girl to go to school. Um, those two types of aid that I've just mentioned, um, are they can certainly help in terms of immediate Band-Aid solution, solutions, but they will not um, contribute to long-term economic development in the sense that uh, it, it will not help to get Africa to grow at sort of 10 percent uh, or, or, or more uh, per year, which would actually meaningfully reduce poverty across the continent. But um, so those two types of aid are very different from the third type of aid, which is what I critique in the book, which is the large um, billion dollar programs of aid that go from government to government and also international institutions such as the World Bank to Africa. Um, and those are the, that's the type of aid that I'm, I'm talking about. The history of aid in Africa or in the development discourse has its uh, roots and actually began in earnest in the, uh, at the Bretton Woods in the 1940s um, and essentially really took hold after the Marshall Plan, um, which uh, was in the night between 1945 and 19, uh, 1950. It was a five-year program. Um, it was $13 billion, um, which in today's terms is about $100 billion. And really, the idea was that um, the newly emerging African countries that were coming out of independence um, had no money to finance economic development. So the idea is very simple, that savings leads to investment, which would lead to growth. The problem is that because these were new economies, there was not necessarily any savings in these economies. And so the idea was that you put aid instead of the savings, and aid should lead to investment and therefore lead to growth. Um, what we have seen, actually, is uh, that that has not been the case. Um, the issue of, of aid delivering growth and reducing poverty um, has not actually happened in reality. If anything, we've seen growth rates go down across Africa and poverty re uh, levels rise very dramatically, um, while at the same time aid has consistently risen over time in Africa. Um, I should add here that one of the fundamental problems with the aid model is that we've tried many different intervention. So in the 1960s, aid was very focused on infrastructure. That didn't work. So the, the decision was to move towards um, aid for poverty. That didn't really work in alleviating poverty. Went to the 1980s where we focused on aid for structure adjustment and stabilization. That also did not deliver the, the growth that we would like to see. Uh, we went to the 1990s, which is focusing on aid for, um, uh, for democracy and governance issues. Again, that did not work efficiently, so we've ended up in the 2000s where there seems to be um, a focus on what I call glamour aid, so the role of celebrities in, uh, in championing and aid, aid causes rather than there being a, a real uh, economic policy. There are many, many reasons 
why aid to Africa does not work, the, the, the government to government aid that I'm referring to. Um, the most obvious one that many people will be very familiar with is the idea that th this money going into Africa is, is ostensibly free in the sense that there's no constraints on how governments on the ground use the money. And so it's very easily corrupted. And in fact, we've got a long history um, across the continent of a lot of the money that has gone into Africa being stolen and diverted for non-productive uses. So corruption is, is an obvious one. Um, however, there are many, many other reasons why um, giving or sending billion dollar packages in the form of US dollars, for example, into small economies is very harmful. For example, um, you can see why having that kind of money uh, flying into a country makes the government less inclined to raise money through other sources of capital. Because they have this steady flow of permanent income, what they perceive as permanent income coming in, the government develops what I would call a lazy muscle, um, and this can breed uh, um, uh, dependency, which means that the governments are not focused on actually building up other sources of capital, such as the private sector, which is important for growth. Um, things like inflation, things like Dutch disease, where basically the domestic or the poor country's export sector gets killed off because there's so much money coming in, which makes the local currency very strong versus other currencies outside. And that actually makes people not interested in buying the uh, food from the poor country. Those, those type of things are also very well doc documented in the, in the literature. But perhaps if I could pick one thing that is particularly problematic with having large flows of money going into a poor country, it would be that all this aid actually disenfranchises Africans. Africans on the ground cannot um, hold their governments accountable in the most effective way. Why? Because African governments um, because of the nature of the system, spend an inordinate amount of time courting and talking to donors about the aid programs. Whereas if they behave, and as we talked before, if the governments behave badly, there's no recourse to that bad behavior from the ground. Um, and we, as we know from historical instance, the, um, the donors themselves tend to be quite lenient on bad governments um, and they allow them to stay in power. So the fact that Africans are disenfranchised uh, means that Africans cannot uh, ensure that their governments deliver um, on social services and public goods um, like you would see in any other uh, country around the world. In particular, it's no surprise that things like education, healthcare, infrastructure, and even security are now being provided to Africa from outsiders. Um, and that just leaves the situation where the African governments uh, have a, a questionable role. What exactly is the role for African governments when they are not responsible for those things? Going back to my point about accountability, um, the whole policy structure, the cultural structure, the cultural fabric of a society that depends on outsiders to finance it is actually then designed and guided by the outsider's view of what they want to see. So the example that you've given of the, uh, the uh, former President Bush's um, policy to provide HIV um, drugs to Africa only under the program of, uh, of abstinence, um, or not drugs, but um, HIV support via the abstinence, is a very good example of how it is that uh, it, it matters less what the Africans think about their own society because the donors, because they're giving the money, have a higher, uh, higher charge on, on what's, what's going to be done with that money.